and welcome back to Forgotten Hollywood in my living room. So I said a while ago that I would explain why I haven't been posting. And the fact of the matter is, if you want to get really, really technical, I was too tired. And the reason I was so tired and falling asleep all the time was because I was in first trimester. So I'm getting out of first trimester now. And um, that's why I'm finally making the announcement. And I would like to thank everyone who has stuck with me during my period of invisibility <laughs> while I dealt with that and figured out how I was going to do things. My plan is, if I can pull it off, to start posting regularly in October. There will be two more videos posted in September that are regular content. And then also these sort of modern Monday videos. Um, but in October, I'm hoping to be able to be posting three times a week. So, here's hoping that I can stay awake long enough <laughs> to get everything done and still take care of my two kiddos. And, um, you know, number three on the way. Now for the content of today's video. I have been watching Cobra Kai with my husband. We have been really enjoying Cobra Kai. But there's this one nagging thing that drives me crazy. And not just in Cobra Kai, but in everything that's really that's modern. And... It's the way that they create drama. It's almost cheap writing, really, but it's the yo-yo relationships. It's most commonly found in teen dramas, but it can be found anywhere. It doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship. Now, in Cobra Kai, there's a limited number of characters of the adults. You've got Johnny, and you've got Carmen, and you've got Daniel, and you've got Amanda. And then the bad guys. Among those those people, they've already had three different relationships. Because you, Daniel and Amanda, married couple. They're together. But then Carmen was with this other guy, Graham, until Johnny scared him away. And now she's with Johnny, except then she wasn't with Johnny. And then she was with Johnny again. And then she wasn't really with Johnny. She was kind of with Johnny, maybe. And now she is with Johnny. And it's just the yo-yo. Up and down, up and down. We don't know if she's going to be with him today. The married couple. Love each other, hate each other. 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 And it's been this roller coaster of we're, we're going to go through this together. We're going to get through this together. To what are you doing? You're destroying our family. You need to stop right now. To we're, we're going to do this together. No, what are you doing? We can't do this. Anyway, that's the adults. And then we have the teen drama. And that's really where it becomes a spider web. Because you have Sam, who is first dating one guy. But he turns out to be a jerk. So then she's dating Miguel. But then he gets jealous because she's friends with Robbie, even though she's not dating Robbie. But he thinks she's dating Robbie. He breaks up with her, and then she starts dating Robbie, which just cements all of his fears and thoughts. But she really still likes Miguel, so she kisses him, and then Robbie finds out, and he gets furious, and he breaks up with her, and tries to kill Miguel, and drama. But then, you know, speaking of Miguel, he's with Sam, but then they have their fight, and they break up. And then he meets this other girl, Tori, who really likes him, but he really wants to be back together with Sam, so Tori sabotages the relationship so she can have Miguel to herself, but Miguel still likes Sam, which she should have known because he told her he wanted to get back together with Sam. So when he kisses Sam at the party, Tori sees this happen, and then she goes after Sam, literally with blades, like she's trying to slit her throat. It's ridiculous how over the top the drama gets based on relationships. I mean, do people really do this in high school? So Miguel doesn't want to be with Tori because she almost killed Sam and drama. And then you've got Robbie and Tori 
who are broken up about the fact that they got dumped because they tried to kill their girlfriend or boyfriend's ex and so they commiserate and become a couple because you know drama and you've got hawk who moon likes but when he becomes a bully she doesn't like him anymore and then when he's nice again she likes him again and it's just and then there's dimitri and yasmin which is kind of a weird relationship in itself and i don't even want to touch that i counted and over the course of the show there are 11 different couples using 15 people this is the best way they can come up with to create drama and tension make the couple fight make the couple get back together make them almost get back together but something happens and they are held apart i know shakespeare is renowned for his romances and tragedies and all that but uh you don't have to put all of them into everything you don't need romeo and juliet as you like it in the taming of the shrew in the same show you don't need to combine all the elements of drama in one thing the channel most famous for this uh romance thing is of course the hallmark channel i've enjoyed hallmark movies are they the epitome of good writing no no not even close but they are enjoyable when you just want something light and something fun yeah that works the hallmark movies have four types of couples that you will see in any given movie now they generally have one of the four types in their movies not all four types as tv shows tend to do because drama the four types are love at first sight where the man and woman see each other and just instant sparks they just know that's someone special i need to be with them this is actually one of the more rare ones because they have to put in drama somehow and when the couple instantly has the connection you have to add drama by having something keep them apart some kind of circumstance or or a person or someone trying to get in the way second example and this is probably the most common in hallmark movies well maybe tied with the third but pretty common is hate at first sight if you're watching a hallmark movie or really any modern romance movie and there's two characters that instantly just sparks fly when they see each other and not in the romantic way but in the i'm going to punch you in the face way that's the hate at first sight but then you know you just know when you see this couple start to fight and they say oh i can't stand them i never want to see them again you're like oh you're either going to be best friends or you're going to be in love by the end of the movie this isn't always with romance you know, you could have two people hate each other, and then by the end of the movie, they're best buds. Doesn't have to be romance, but this is how relationships are built. When you want drama. Third, and this is actually my personal favorite, is the opposites attract. Where you have two people from either different backgrounds, or different personalities, or different styles, that are forced to work together. One of the most common for Christmas movies is to have the rich person and the poor person. There was one I watched uh, last holiday season where it was a, a prince and a waitress. I think I just described like 17 Hallmark Channel movies. And that's one of the most common because that's the easiest way to add tension. It's the easiest way to add humor is to have them be polar opposites but it can become formulaic as i said there's probably mentioned 17 uh, hallmark channel movies where it's the prince and the waitress shopkeeper baker chef nanny the fourth and final uh, relationship type that they have in hallmark movies and really in anything with a romance is the reunion couple see this in parent trap and such like that where it's uh two people that were a couple that got 
separated, they broke up, they one moved away, one disappeared, whatever. They separated, and now they're back together again. So those are the the four different types. And when you have a TV show like Cobra Kai that has to last many episodes, many seasons, they tend to just cycle through them. You know, these people have a love at first sight, but these people hate each other, and these people are opposites, and these people used to be together, and then they've come back together. It's all there! It's all there! And they just sort of cycle through them of which one are we going to do today? Which one are we going to do today? And you don't know. You just don't know because it's the yo-yo. And they just keep going. It just keeps spinning. Now, it's not to say that these styles of romance don't work ever. There are great examples of good movies that use these exact styles. There is also the fifth style, which is not as common anymore because people like to have the couple get together in the end. And that is the non-commitment. Gunsmoke is a very, very, very famous example of this. And it was done very, very well. Where you had the tension between Matt and Kitty. They were clearly a couple. They were clearly in love, but they never took that next step. Because if they had taken the next step, the tension would be gone. And without the tension, that would lose a huge aspect of the show. And so people think they want the couple to get together, but sometimes the tension is better than the closure that you get when they do get together because then you're, you're done. They're together. And the only way to keep the tension is to go through the cycles of love each other, hate each other, love each other, hate each other. And that just gets tedious and annoying and it turns into a soap opera. You, know, you have the uh, best friend from college shows up and the couple's on the rocks so the girl goes to the best friend for comfort and ends up hooking up with him and then the, the man feels betrayed because she hooked up with his best friend and so he goes out and he hooks up with her best friend and then she's shocked and betrayed and drama so a few examples of the good romances of the good ways of doing this is um, for the love at first sight you have yours mine and ours the first time the couple sees each other is in the grocery store and there's immediately an attraction there but instead of the instant love at first sight and, oh i'm with you right now like um what's the movie the movie enchanted you know i know him for a day and tomorrow it will be two days yes i i know that's mocking princess movies but it's still funny but in Yours, Mine, and Ours, they have the initial spark. But then it shows them get to know each other. It has a montage of them dating. Um, they even try to be apart because of the freakish number of children that they have together. But they gradually realize that they need to be together. That they're perfect for each other and they want to be together. For um, hating each other at first sight, one of my very favorite examples is Singing in the Rain. The couple in that meets when he jumps into her car and asks her to drive him away from his raging fans because he's a movie star. But she acts like she doesn't even know who he is and she wants him out of her car and she doesn't like him. And they get in a fight. So, of course, they are destined to be in love. But that also is a natural progression. You see them getting to know each other. You see the misunderstandings getting worked out. And you can see the progression. That's the biggest thing for a realistic romance. As much as romances and rom-coms and such can be realistic. But it's you have to have the natural progression. You know. We like when people go from point A to point B to point C to point D. What's annoying is when you go from point A to point D to point B to point A again. Back to point D to point C. And then over there to M. That's, that's where you start. What are they doing now? I don't even know anymore. One of my favorite versions of the opposites attract, and there's a lot of them because, like I said, that's my favorite style of romance. But one of my favorites is the remake of Sabrina, starring Harrison Ford and Julie Ormond, 
where Harrison Ford is playing a very rich uh, businessman. He's very serious. He's very technical minded. He doesn't have time for anything but work. His brother is in a relationship that will make him a lot of money because of who her father is and his company. It's like, okay, this is the perfect match. Another woman catches his brother's eye. So he has to get her out of the way so that it doesn't ruin the relationship between his brother and his brother's fiance, especially his brother's future father-in-law. He ends up trying to seduce Sabrina. He doesn't know how to seduce anyone, which leads to a little bit of awkwardness and such as he tries to sort of pretend to seduce her so that he can get her out of the way. Then he ends up actually falling for her. This The chauffeur's daughter who's into taking pictures and reading poetry and slowing down, enjoying life when he, you know, doesn't even look out the window in his private jet because he has too much paperwork. And they're polar opposites, but they come together in the most organic and beautiful way. Of course, then there's the tension where he has to tell her that he was faking it at first, that he was just trying to keep her out of the way because he likes her too much not to be honest with her and that just, you know, there's still drama, but it's done well. Finally, there's the reunion couple. Again, I know of several versions of this, but one I would like to mention is the John Wayne movie Rio Grande, where he plays a military man whose wife has shown up because one of his recruits is their son. And she doesn't want her son in the army. She doesn't want her son being like his father. She wants him being a, a gentleman, a landowner, and she wants him away. He has no problem with his son following in his footsteps and being in the army. And what's wrong with that? He doesn't release him and tell him to go home with his mother. And also because that would be kind of humiliating to the 17-year-old boy. Or say, your mommy came to get you. So um, say goodbye to your cadet friends. And yeah, no. <laughs> He's not going to do that to him. But it shows them that they're working through their problems, they're working through their differences that caused them to split in the first place and bring them back together by the end of the movie. Very beautiful, organically done, natural character progression based on the events and the dialogues and the characters, and just well written. The point that I want to make is that you can have romance, you can have drama, it just needs to be done well. Not everything has to be teen drama. The teen drama doesn't have to be teen drama. Crying out loud. If you do it well, if you do it organically, if you show the character progression, if you show the natural buildup of the relationship or fall of the relationship, it doesn't come across as love each other, hate each other, love each other, hate each other, love each other, hate each other. I'm getting dizzy. Thanks for watching. If you like this sort of content, like and subscribe. It really helps out. It's very encouraging. Leave a comment below if there's anything else you want me to check out, to comment on. I will catch up with you next time.